I hear a lot of athletes be like, oh, I'm doing this for my family or whoever. I think it's good to have inspiration from other people, but it has to come from you at the end of the day. I think my physical burnout was a result of a mental burnout, and I felt like I was doing everything for everyone else. I finally got to ask myself what I wanted out of my career. Welcome to Can't Wait to Hear From You, where we visit the minds of remarkable people and engage in conversation with their inner voice, powered by Hanakuma and Modern Health. Today I'm excited to welcome the phenomenal individual, Kayla Nohashi. She is not only a powerhouse on the gymnastics floor, but also a force of positivity, resilience, and inspiration to many others around the globe. Thank you, Modern Health, for powering this conversation. And thank you, Caitlin, for being here with us today. Thanks for having me. How did you prioritize your mental health when you were competing? Or did you prioritize your mental health? Is honestly the better <laughs> question, I guess. I was gonna say, I'm like, yeah. I don't, no one talked about it. Like, yeah, yeah. it wasn't a thing I even thought about. I'm like, I was too focused on gym and all that, um, all that stuff to even think about my mental health. So it wasn't until I got injured that I stepped away from the sport and I got into writing and my mom put me into therapy, which I'll say right now, I'm like, if you're not ready for therapy, you're never gonna like receive help. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't at that point. What did you injure exactly? At my last competition in 2013, like American Cup, my vertebrae was like sticking out. Like I could run my finger back mm -hmm. and it was just like bulging. Like I couldn't touch it really or anything around mm -hmm. it without just like crying. I can't even imagine having to just sit there, especially in pain too. You realize you can't, you can't do anything with yeah. like a back injury. I was in a back brace for like six months, but writing felt like my way out. Then in college, I started therapy heavier. Our coach made us go once a week and I thank her for that because I think I was ready finally then to start understanding my mind and everything going on and my emotions. Because I think you learn to compartmentalize a lot in sports. Like it's not a big enough deal, so just put it in the back burner. So I was feeling things come up from years later and I couldn't place my finger on what I was even feeling when I was feeling it. How did you get through those hard days when you were injured? I, I honestly have no idea. I like, me and my mom, weren't on good terms at that point too. Mm. So my, and my dad lived in a different state. So I remember us fighting all the time. Like oh. I ran away at some point. Oh, no. <laughs> I did hard. all types of crazy things oh, when no. I was going through the injury. And then I felt like I didn't have an outlet for anyone to talk to and understand because I, everyone goes through it in the sport. So my story wasn't that like different, mm. it felt like. And so writing kind of allowed me to explore my own emotions without input from others. And that's my saving grace. Also kind of trying to just be like a regular human, like going to uh, high school again and meeting friends. Trying to go to normal life. Yeah. yeah. So you've been through a lot of coaching through gymnastics, but have you been through any coaching mentally? I would say like my coach in college, Miss Bao, she has been like my lifesaver in the sport. Mm -hmm. And she wasn't necessarily, or to me at least, didn't feel like my gymnastics coach. She felt like my life coach. I think she's still really there for me even today. And she's the person that kind of helped me rediscover my love for gymnastics and my love for myself even. I know she made it a point to not really like talk to me about gymnastics and let our relationship form like authentically without the sport. That's great. How old were you when? In college, so. Oh, it was like, college, yeah. Yeah, 18. 18, 18 yeah. 19 years old. I feel like that is such an important person to have in your life, especially at that age, because you're just still trying to figure yourself out. For and sure. already kind of going through what you've been through, being able to talk to someone not about gymnastics, <laughs> who's in gymnastics, was probably super relieving for you. <laughs> Very beneficial. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that our generation has really changed the game for mental health? I would say definitely, especially in like sports, you can see a major shift. I think last year was like the okay. year of mental health and people not just talking the talk, but walking it, like dropping out of major competitions mm. uh, to 
preserve their mental health. And so I think that's really important to see in the public. And um, sports is one of the most, I think, black and white areas that you could possibly have mental health because we put our bodies on the line a lot in our sport. And then I think it can open doors for a lot of people to then take mental health spaces and to work and business and things like that. So I think it's been definitely a big game changer and I feel like us being online and talking about it and being super open and transparent has made a huge shift in the conversation and making it not taboo anymore. Yeah. What are you doing right now to focus on that? at this moment? One thing that I realized last year is I need to make more time and space to go outside. So I feel like I used to do a lot of that and I got and got away from it. So making sure that I get my daily dose of vitamin D is important to me. And taking trips has been like, okay. I feel like I traveled a lot for gym and things like that, mm -hmm. but I never got to experience other countries. And so the past two years, I've been trying to make it a point to go on vacations and have that time and space for myself. And yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm the same way. I love a good walk. Give me a walk with a cup of coffee in my hand. <laughs> my day is set for success. I feel it. And the sun, I'm telling you, sitting out in the sun too just makes you feel better as well. How would you best describe your inner voice? I think it depends like on the time, the place, what's going on in my life. Our coach used to always tell us that we have like a bad wolf and a good wolf and they can't coexist at the same time. So it's that voice that we feed that overpowers. So I really try to focus on the light positive sides of every situation that I get in. But obviously, you know, there's times when yeah. it does yeah. become overpowering. <laughs> yeah. But I'd like to say my inner voice is more of my better friend. Okay, that's great. I mean, I 100% agree because I'll sometimes have, you know, like the little devil and the angel being like, you're great, you're not great. And then you just kind of have to move forward with them, yeah. constantly talking in your head. Um, so you've opened up about the tough side of gymnastics and the struggles. How have you been able to take those challenges and turn them into positive messages for other people? When I was in college, I didn't even realize I was doing it at first because I just loved writing and I liked practicing that. And I remember my freshman year, I got sucked into this like dark hole of, you know, when you sit around with your friends and yeah. you just start talking <laughs> negatively yeah. and it just becomes this whole spiral. And yeah. I just felt like so bad about myself and everything around me. And so my sophomore year, I wanted to change things around and me and my friends started a blog and kind of started talking about body shaming and like, I mean, there's been a death in gymnastics. I think we started with that on anorexia. Really? Yeah. So we'd start talking about that and then we're like, oh, let's get into our personal stories with why we're passionate about this subject. Mm -hmm. And that's the first time when I started getting a lot of positive feedback, like we need stories like this. And I resonated so much and it wasn't just one type of demographic. It was like older people, younger people, men, women, and so, that was when I was like, words can really change something. Mm -hmm. And simultaneously while you feel it, you get this like, not validation, but kind of in a sense where you're like, oh, I'm not alone. And I don't have to feel that way when I share these stories. And so it's kind of like a win-win on both sides mm -hmm. of like being able to share a story and feeling like a community around you. And I mean, I have like a bunch of chronic, chronic illnesses and I felt really alone in those experiences. Mm -hmm. And I realized everyone puts their best foot forward on social media. That's not my reality. Yeah. So I wanted to start sharing those online because it was important for someone else to not feel alone if it helped. And so it's like building community with your words and an umbrella where we can all huddle around and share positive messages and stories. I love that. And also, I just want you to know, I geeked out when I found out that you write poetry, because I also write poetry. Oh my God, I know, and I was like, some. I know, I was like, <laughs> I love that. Uh, but I did read your self-hate goodbye poem. I resonated with that so much, because I dealt with a lot of self-hate on myself. I was curious, what was the inspiration behind that? I think there's this point where you come to where it's like, okay, yeah, 
kind of that the devil talking in our head and it's yeah. like you aren't good enough you're too big like be smaller be skinnier especially in a sport like gymnastics where we're literally wearing nothing and I was criticized by the time I was like 13 told I was too fat it's like shedding those layers and understanding that we don't own anybody's words that they tell us so we're not those things and convince myself I guess that like I am worth love I am good enough and accepting that the earlier we can accept ourselves and our skin <laughs> way easier life gets because we're trapped with ourselves right yeah a hundred percent have you thought about coming out with a book or do you have a book no i don't currently have one i'm working on like a teenage series okay. right now um cool. and then hopefully a couple poetry books which i'm like i don't know if you feel this way with poetry but mm -hmm. i like sometimes i'm like if i feel really confident about one then I start reading it more and more, and then I'm like, oh, I don't think it's just worth putting out. All the time. <laughs> it's so personal to share, and you're like, oh, do I really yeah. want to do this? I don't know. How were you able to transition from athlete life to a normal life? Yeah. Being injured, so I got injured when I was a junior mm -hmm. in high school. I was out for two years. And I kind of got to understand what my life would be like without the sport. I remember them telling me, you might never, not ever do gymnastics again. And I felt, the first thing I felt was relief. I was like, oh wow, oh, I'll never have to do the sport again, thank God. That was a blessing in disguise because I finally realized that I wasn't my medals, I wasn't my gymnastics sure. accomplishments. I wasn't a gymnast, I got to do gymnastics. So. I don't know, it wasn't that hard for me to give up because something you think about in gymnastics, there's not a path really after college. Mm -hmm. So you're like kind of coming to terms with it for the four years that you're there. And I couldn't be happier with where it is. Of course, there's times when it's like, I always get like almost offended when people are like, what do you do now? And like a judgmental tone. You're like, like a lot actually. <laughs> yeah. I'm more than just gymnastics. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's the only thing I feel like I have to deal with a little better, but it's cool. So when you decided to end elite competition and you went through your mental burnout and went through your injuries, how did you take that experience and I guess use it to get to your success now? I hear a lot of athletes be like, oh, I'm doing this for my family or whoever. And I think it's good to have inspiration from other people and motivation from other people, but it has to come from you at the end of the day. And that's what my injury taught me is like, I think my physical burnout was a result of a mental burnout and I felt like I was doing everything for everyone else. And I finally got to ask myself what I wanted out of my career. So every time I stepped on that floor, it wasn't because I had to or because I felt like I needed to for my family or my coaches. I did it because I got to, like I fell in love with the sport again and was doing it because I full heartedly love it. Also getting outside of gymnastics because like, it consumes you, the mm -hmm. sport, and I never even got to meet people outside of it until I got to college. And I started bringing all this inspiration and felt like, oh, my world isn't the world, by the mm -hmm. way. <laughs> like, yeah. There's so much to it. And I felt like I got to bring that into my gymnastics career in college. I love that. Yeah. Have you hopped into any new hobbies or passions now? I mean, I know you said you're, you're writing a lot, yeah. but is there anything else? Yeah, uh, like writing, photography, and also I'm starting now, hopefully Q1 of next year will be launched, but I'm starting a leotard company. So I love that. Two of my passions, yeah. I love design, and I feel like gymnastics it was a perfect combination. That's awesome. Wait, what did you go to school for? Gender studies. Oh, so. okay. <laughs> got it, got it, yeah, got yeah, it. Yeah. Okay, I love that. How has being an athlete in the world of business help you get to that point? I think one, being disciplined is super important and like um, regimented and that's something sport teaches you. Mm -hmm. And then another thing I would say is like the team aspect, right? I didn't, I feel like gymnastics is super individual and I didn't learn what a team could do for you until college and you realize how important it is to the people around you and normal day life in the sport and in business, it's the same thing. Like I can admit where my faults are and I know that I can't do everything. So being able to formulate a team that can bring the other aspects to the table has been crucial. What does a typical day in Caitlin's life look like? Oh, 
Do you do anything that keeps you grounded? Is it just being outside? Like a day in the life. <laughs> I'm like, every day, so, every day is different. But, okay. Um, I feel like I'm pretty lucky because I don't have like a normal nine to five job that holds me to a schedule. But I think it's also really important for me for, to, for me to have schedule or else I could lay in bed like all day all, long, all day. I'm like, mm -hmm. so um, I guess kind of like waking up, maybe going to the gym, working out, Pilates, whatever that is that day. And then hang out with friends a lot, to be honest. So um, okay, social butterfly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, yeah, and also being like creative. So I kind of stepped away from that more, but I'm like, okay, I want to start writing more and having time for that. And then also just got a sewing machine, so I'm starting to like fun. I'm starting simple projects like altering all my pants because short girl problems. <laughs> okay, so th so that's good though. You're just tapping into hobbies and activities that you really love, which probably keeps you sane. Yeah. Because doing stuff like that keeps me sane all. <laughs> don't, don't worry. I feel like my life's like backwards. I'm like, I worked so hard as a kid and now I'm like, now it's like my hobby Relax. time, my like but playground okay. time. Hey, yeah, I mean, I get that for sure. Thank you, Caitlin, for being here with us today. Thanks for having me. Some of my inner thoughts and takeaways from this conversation is that it's super important to believe in yourself, trust in yourself, listen to yourself, and stand up for yourself. You can say anything as long as it's honest and respectful, and no one else is gonna do it for you, so it's your journey and path. Do what feeds your soul. Guys, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe to stay tuned for the next episode.